What's up, Doombots? We are doing Red Skull Hydra ISO 8s. So, uh, this is a defense team. A lot of people just picked it up from a pack or you're working it on now. It's nowhere near as viable as it was when it came out, but honestly, what is, right? Uh, still, as you unlock this team, regardless of whether you're using them as a war defense team, generic blitz team, or splitting them apart for some kind of weird hybrids, uh, how you build the characters matters a little bit less about what they do as a team and a little bit more individual. Most teams, they really, really depend on how you place the team and what goes where. Black Order, you've seen all the videos, right? They're linked up here somewhere. Uh, some teams just work better. Now, sometimes individual characters have multiple options, like Carnage can be a healer or a skirmisher, depending on if he's on his team or not. It, things go out there. The cool thing, I guess, about the Hydra characters is that they, they're they pretty across the board. What you see is what you get. So we'll start off with Hydra Rifle Trooper. Um, Hydra Rifle Trooper is a very simple character. Its basic attack is a ton of damage with some piercing. Uh, its ultimate is an AoE that hits everybody for 150% piercing. And it's a four energy attack, so it is ready on turn one. But it takes a while to get back there. And then for the cause, increases the overall damage of the character, uh, grants some extra health, and then on, you know, chance to assist Hydra allies on non-attack abilities. He's got a bunch of stuff going on. Now, I have him set as a raider. One, because the first thing this character is going to do is AoE. Uh, on auto or any other time you really want to get that AoE out of the way. The Punisher spray and pray kind of thing. So the chance of it critting is is relatively reasonable. Uh, another thing to note is that uh, whenever he assists, an assist can still crit. So even though the passive ability here says he has a chance to uh, assist a Hydra ally on a non-attack ability, it can still crit. It will still apply a vulnerable. The one thing that is of questionable value is on revive attack all enemies to 150% piercing. In general, uh, those don't apply when they crit. Uh, I haven't necessarily seen this to work differently. The uh, When he gets killed and revived, his AoE that happens, I don't necessarily believe that that's an on attack, you know, on target. I think it just happens. Uh, and especially because it just happens and there's no actual target, uh, I don't know if it works. Kind of like how Thor's passive, uh, even if it does crit, it doesn't necessarily do anything as far as uh, placing vulnerables are concerned. Uh, I think that because he's the primary damage dealer, crit is very reasonable for what this kit does, but Striker is just as reasonable. This character really has a relatively decent damage stat at high investment levels, uh, and his stat is boosted, so... If it's worthwhile to have plus 10% damage on his kit, an extra 5%, you know, fundamentally makes this 15. So it's a reasonable upgrade as far as it's concerned. The bonus attack does have an element of piercing to it. Uh, it's just not amazing. It's, it just feels like taking that extra opportunity to get damage in on him isn't great. So you might as well take the chance of getting him to proc the vulnerables. Uh, I've heard Skirmisher is also okay on him, but in general, the way this team works, if you've used it or fought against it, you know they're really just about overpowering you with damage and characters on the field and speed, so the faster this guy can do more damage, the better. I really like how crit winds up on him. Uh, there's no reason to make him survivable, there's no reason to give him heal or anything else, uh, and Skirmisher is always an option, but not necessary because he doesn't really apply anything and he's not attacking off and that said skirmisher does benefit from this assist by constantly and continuously putting a vulnerable on a target because this is an assist not a passive uh triggered ability so skirmisher is very reasonable on this character as well uh, moving to hydra sniper sniper is just pure damage he's not particularly fast even though Zero in does give him speed up for two turns, fill speed bar. He does take quite a bit of turns. He is only using the basic, which is just piercing damage. Because piercing damage ignores uh, things like uh, deflect, not deflect, 
uh, armor. It is true damage, so as a rule, you probably want to lean into that damage and raise his damage stat up significantly. Damage stat's also not unreasonable for a minion anyway. Another note on target is just he controls speed. Now, in war defense, he does have an increased crit chance, which will make a lot of people think maybe just maybe uh putting some more into crit would be relevant but again he is only hitting one target and the damage he's doing is not uh the crit plus 30 or plus yeah plus 30 plus 40 if you have all the way maxed out is not going to be more meaningful because it's still very infrequent compared to just more damage all the time uh it, it, to me this is pretty much a no-brainer it's just extra damage on the damage dealer kind of guy. Whether he crits or not, you're still not going to regret having extra base damage. Uh, Red Skull himself, I think Red Skull has a lot of justifications. The only two I don't think uh, that work very well with him are Raider uh, and Fortifier. Obviously, I don't think you need Fortifier on him because he's either going to never die or he'll be fine. Uh, or he'll get immediately gibbed after the entire fight's over. So there's a lot of stuff to think about. I don't think you need his survivability. Even when you take him out of the team, the Fortifier stands up a little bit better, but I think you get more out of some of the, the higher impact things. Now, Hail Hydra, we know this. This doesn't really do anything except increase his damage uh, and Hydra minions damage. So there's nothing here that's happening relevant to the game mode, just it's or damage, just... You know, on war, he's immortal, uh, and then he res resurrects minions, which is reasonable. Uh, Storm Assault applies offense up to three random allies, and then he hits one target, which is great, and then gains assist from three to five, or all five at tier fours, Hydra allies. Because this attack, uh, it hits one target and nobody else, there's no reason to look at Raider at really anything he does. But because it does call for an additional series of assists, uh, of extra attacks, even though it's 50% damage, applying a vulnerable with that attack is very reasonable. So that's an argument for Skirmisher on him. Uh, this attack isn't very frequent. You don't do it too often. Uh, you can't even do it the turn he comes into play. So because it's like two turns or three turns in, they are very fast, but it still only hits one target. The assists, it'll make it a little bit better. I just like having his base damage higher, so I put Striker on it for that. Uh, Elite Guard literally does nothing. Just summons defense from, uh, just, sorry, just summons uh, ability energy for himself on defense. But they don't do, it doesn't cause an attack. It doesn't do anything but make dudes. Uh, so there's no benefit to any ISO form this ability. And then the basic here is attack primary target and apply defense down. Another argument where Skirmisher could be relevant because take applying defense down and removing a buff uh, at Skirmisher 3 could be incredibly relevant if they already have a vulnerable or not. If you just attack them for a good chunk of damage, apply defense down and a vulnerable, that is a fundamental like 60% increase in damage they're going to take on the next attack. So Skirmisher has a very strong value. I think Skirmisher is the best for Red Skull uh, outside of this specific version of the team. And I think it's very good on this specific. I like to see Skirmisher more on like Zemo, Red Skull hybrids, if that makes sense. Just to kind of set up what the rest of those characters are doing. Uh, but for me, for, especially for right now, I just want his damage stat to be a little bit more meaningful. So I have him set to Striker. I think that Skirmisher is reasonable. I think that Healer is actually okay, considering the fact that he is kind of immortal on a war defense. So him throwing out a little bit of extra heals every once in a while is definitely positive. But there are enough answers in the meta to this team that building it to be the best version of itself is only relevant for a very short period of time. So I think when you want to look at the character, you want to look at what makes them great. I think Striker and I think Skirmisher on Red Skull are, are two pretty easy ones. Moving on to Hydra Scientist. Scientist. Uh, Experimental Serum is a health buff. Uh, apply regen. Great, wonderful on war defense. Apply offense down, defense down to the enemy. Defense down, offense down to that enemy. So this character has a couple of different positives. The first is this is a reasonable heal on its own. So increasing his healing is already going to be great. I can clear stun. Uh, as a Talon Pistol is a pretty decent attack. 
It only ever has 50% chance to apply heal block if Red Skull isn't present. Red Skull is going to be present, so it's always going to apply heal block. So again, this is another character where if you really look at it, uh, Fortifier doesn't make too much sense for what the team does. Healer is very reasonable. He is a healer. Uh, you tend to put healer on healer, so it's not a big deal. I think Skirmisher is incredibly relevant on this character, but Striker and Raider, he, most of what Hydra Scientist does, especially if you could track the energy cost they has, uh, he's not going to be doing too many physical damage attacks against your opponent. It's just going to be this. So Skirmisher is okay, uh, but I think healer is almost obvious on this character like why would you do anything else let this guy heal as much as he can uh especially passively the health pool on this character isn't unreasonable uh, and they do take a lot of turns so you're getting a lot of extra healing out of them the last is hydra armored guard uh so alert doesn't do any damage right it just heals himself so healer is okay for that Rapid fire, uh, apply assist now on Hydra Rifle Trooper Ally, uh, attack primary target for 290% damage and 20% piercing. So you can, uh, if you end up having Skirmisher on your Hydra Rifle Trooper, uh, this attack will attack twice. You will get, uh, assuming he's Striker. So there's a little bit of a combo where you can set this character to Striker, uh, Hydra Rifle Trooper to Skirmisher, and then the second you use this attack, uh, the assist that you receive from Hydra Rifle Trooper will place a vulnerable on the target. And as a result of it, because the game is dumb, it goes, hey, that guy's vulnerable. I should get my bonus ISO attack. So it is okay to place a uh, striker on him as a character. And then Serum Treatment is just an armor increase and on turn heal self. There's uh, two, those are the two major options for him, uh, striker and healer. Again, I, I don't like to put Fortifier on characters, especially on this team, because they're just going to res themselves. That said, there is a bonus. I will just tell you guys this now, because we're at the end. Every time they res, it's considered on spawn, so they do res with an extra barrier. You know, this will be up to, you know, 20,000, 25, uh, 35,000 barrier on spawn, which is really higher than a lot of them actually have uh, the ability to get. But it's okay to put this on those characters. Again, for war defense, if you build too hard on this team, it's not going to matter in a short period of time as more and more players get more and more answers that can st shut this team down quickly. So I don't think it's a very high priority for you to worry about Fortifier. But early on, if you want to put that one rank of Fortifier in these characters, I think it's fair. It's just once you get to the two and three, that's when you want to make your choice between Healer, Striker uh, on him, and you know whatever we had mentioned previously. So Raider, not likely on him. He doesn't crit and he doesn't attack that often. Skirmisher is always okay, but he's not really playing with offense up and defense up. He's not really applying too much. He's just doing damage. So to me, it's pretty obvious. Healer keeps himself and a little bit of extra healing out to the rest of the team. Striker uh, makes him do a little bit more damage, which isn't completely and totally irrelevant. I will also like to note that this is every uh, third turn. So you do it and then it's one, two, you do it again. So he will be taunting quite often. He will be healing himself quite often. And the team again is very fast. So that's pretty much it when it comes to the Hydra team. Again, I'm sorry that this team isn't, you know, super built around ISOs, but I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a sneak on this one as a reward uh, for watching this series, because I know a lot of people just kind of already know a little bit about how these characters go. So if you slog through this, I'm going to let you know that when the ISO 8 Blue, or the next tier of ISO 8s come out, which should be around March of 2021, might be pushed back, but I've heard nothing about that. You're going to see a little bit of a different mechanism of how ISOs work. Some people are under the impression that it's just going to be another tier of the existing ones, uh, and that might be accurate, but I don't necessarily think it's you'd be right in assuming that this next tier is just going to be a continuation of what the previous things did. Uh, there might be a stage two of Fortifier where you just gain more shield and give more shield or something. But I, I think you should expect that the blue ISOs 8s that are coming out, tier two or stage two of ISO 8s, are going to be a little bit more 
uh, unique and customizable compared to the first tier. Anyway, uh, and that's what's going to make this team kind of stand out a little bit more, as well as some of the other teams that have fallen back. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to comment below and uh, let me know if you think I've done something horrendously wrong with this build. Not just what I you see here, but what I've said. If you think that it's obvious that Hydra Sniper should be crit, you know, comment below. Let me know how that feels. Other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangilli, and I'll catch you later.